Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're gonna talk about strap-on versus third stage. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly is the problem? Well, problem is very simple. Rockets are ludicrously expensive and idiotically complex. Now to give you a context on them, there are hundreds of countries on this planet, almost 200. Now here's the deal, not 200 of them have space program. Although almost everything else can be found everywhere else, like dams, bridges, uh, metros, things of that nature. You can find it almost everywhere. Space agencies, very few. So why is that? Well, rockets are expensive. Things that we put on top of the rocket, that's not that expensive anymore. Especially after miniaturization of electronics and semiconductor development, those are free. But rocket is still super expensive and super complex. Now here's the deal. Why is that? Well, there is this known law of physics that says uh, you cannot make one rocket to rule them all. It's like a law. So that creates a problem. And here's the deal. Uh, our portfolio, like what we want to do, back in the old days, it was very simple. We wanted to boom other guy. So it was like <laughs> boom nothing complex but now we have very vast portfolio meaning your portfolio could start from very small things like hey i want to go to low earth orbit then it can grow a bit then it will be like hey i want to go to medium earth orbit where we put gps satellites it could go even more more than that it's like hey i want long range communication geostationary satellite or you want to go even bigger interplanetary basically exceed uh, the geostationary orbit and go to basically moon mars or whatever have you so you see, our portfolio is ludicrously diverse. That's why we cannot build one rocket that can take care of all of it. And uh, in past, we basically created different rocket to take care of each of these profiles. So you can have one for interstellar, uh, basically interplanetary stuff, one good for geostationary, one good for low Earth orbit. Now here's the, it worked. That's why we have space agencies. Problem is this backfired. Uh, this approach uh, this limited us in terms of mass production meaning we were not mass producing anything of the rockets basically every rocket was bespoke rocket consequence of that is price never came down you compare the same 1960s technology to now any field cars uh, home appliances shoes clothes whatever have you all of them have come down in price drastically be it even aircraft come down in price drastically uh, but rockets never got that same luxury why mass production was not done why again we were building way too many different rockets right now i'm just giving you three examples there were hundreds of them and uh, each was were built for like one specific thing and model variety versions they were bonkers so we never got the luxury of mass production so that was the very big problem with rocketry so how does strap-on play into this picture? Well, you have to understand, rocketry started very early on. Like in 40s and 50s, people were experimenting with boom boom. And then by 50s and 60s, it started to become a thing. And in 1960s is the era of strap-on. Now, why is that? Well, here's the deal. Back then, rockets were barely powerful enough. And in that era, a cost-effective solution was needed in order to handle it. So uh, strap-on booster was very logical because missile technology had a bit progressed much further, especially RPGs and all that jazz. So they were like, what if we strap the, those puppies onto liquid puppies that are very weak and get something done. And if you had a light payload, you would not strap on or you will strap few of them. So you could literally see old rocket designs and that could be literally designed to be able to strap on to 12 rockets. Not even joking, 12 rockets. Like, of course, if you have light payload, four of them. If you have medium payload, eight of them. That's how you can scale up to. Like India's uh, PSLV has a lot of portfolio option. So that's how we started in uh, basically 60s. That was the golden era. And uh, be wonderful, that is the same time as the space race had started. So this is how we got it. And this is how we got to do big missions back in those days. Now here's the, this idea became the core doctrine for space industry. And space industry stagnated the moment uh, Cold War ended. Basically after Apollo missions, done. Everybody put the pen down. So technology, kind of got stuck there. And because rocketry was so slow, so methodic, uh, the, even though designs that could be brought to the market in 19, let's say 90s, turns out the core design is literally from 1960s. So core ethics, core philosophy of rocketry got stuck in that era of 1960s era. So every, even modern rocketry, even modern rocketry books, you open it up, it's like strap on. It's like, why? That was needed for 1960s, not now, but like it got stuck in there. So it's almost like a momentum kind of thing. Where is enough momentum in strap-on ecology that a new rocket that's supposed to be made by Aryan, that's supposed to be the new king of the thing, it's already outdated, it's already so bankrupting the country and 
country as in like EU and they were like uh, I'm not even joking look at the uh, reviews that ESA has over it's like we have to swallow it because we have no other option same with uh, ULA Vulcan like oh, Vulcan can do this it does not matter if you have strap on design fundamentally you are stuck in 1960s same with PSLV like even though electronics of them is uh, upgraded exponentially from 1960s but the core essence core philosophy is from 60s so this is where we got the idea of like strapping things onto a rocket. Now what is the problem? It did work, but what's the problem then? The problem is no longer 1960s, meaning this idea of putting ICBMs uh, on top of your space shuttle. Yeah, that sounded good in 70s, not now. So what happened? Like what is the fundamental change that allowed us to scale up this much? Well, uh, metallurgy. Meaning, if you look at very early or uh, designs, V2 rocket kind of designs, you will find very early on is that they were putting liquid water, like raw water, like of course distilled water. They were putting distilled water in a rocket fuel. It's like, why? Well, if they put 100% fuel, uh, they were finding out the combustion temperature was so high that it was melting through engines. Metallurgy, we did not have the metallurgy. Like if you if you have a time machine, take the metallurgy that is used in a Raptor engine right now in the, its core, show them that this material exists that has this sort of characteristics. They were like, what are you smoking, my man? A metal that can handle hot oxygen flow at that sort of mass flow rate? Yeah, that's not happening. But it's normal technology now. And yes, I do mean normal, meaning you can just go and buy it. So metallurgy has improved drastically. On top of that, engine design also became better. So not only we can make a metal alloys that can handle much more reactive environment and much higher temperature, our design allows us to wick enough heat away fast enough where you can like literally run uh, the temperature to be almost psychometric ratio, as hot as it can get. You can like push to it. So that was not possible in 60s. Now why SpaceX is successful? They are not in 60s, they are in 2000s. Everything about Falcon 9 is designed in 2000. That's why it looks fundamentally different compared to all other rockets, including ULA. And that's the reason why it does not have strap-ons. I'll explain it further. And uh, strap-on, what is it? Actually, what it is? It's just a missile with less boom. So missiles, like you see like this, that's the same thing. Same uh, topology, so to say. Actually, many times it's the same thing. Same manufacturer that makes the ICBMs is the one making this puppy also. Yes, same portfolio, everything. Like many times it was like, you would be shocked. Like it's the same company that is manufacturing the solid boosters would be like, yeah, we also have this subsidiary that makes the boom boom devices. Now here's the, that should give you a context that like, hey, if we are making it thousands of this, shouldn't it be free or cheap? Well, here's the problem with that. Is that while a missile like this, is just a missile with less kaboom and more boom part and instead of explosion all it has explosive bolts it's fundamentally hazardous what does that mean that simply means can army handle missiles absolutely they do that look into how many missiles have been fired in uh, basically uh, russia ukraine ukraine war for last two years it's bonkersly large number but here's the deal look at the price of them it's idiotically bonkers like you are talking about nasa that at best case scenario was getting in apollo era four percent of national gdp uh, national GDP, our national budget, and uh, compare that to armed forces, it's like, yeah, lol. So that's the problem. Can we make mass produce these things? Of course, we do that, but here's the deal they are do done for a different field, and that field does not have to show ROI, does not have to show, uh, like, uh, you know, how efficiently you are doing that. Space is different then. Especially, it's becoming different now. So, in early days, this was acceptable. Nowadays, it's not, because, like, are you kidding me? Like, this is ludicrously expensive and hazardous. Can we handle it? Absolutely. But it requires money. Can we uh, move them around trains? Yeah, but you have to make sure that train does not go around any public trains. You have to make sure there is no, like it's a completely void area. Because again, okay, if anything bad happens, these things will, will go from whoosh to kaboom. So we, it's fundamentally expensive. Can we handle it? Absolutely. But all it means is blank check. And that's the problem. We cannot mass produce it cheaply. Can you make it? Of course, we do that. It's just that we do not ask the price in order to do that. So that's the inherent problem. Even though on paper it sounds good, sounds awesome, economical also, but if you pay attention to it, it would be either a direct copy paste of a ICBM technology or a surplus of some parts that they are no longer using, like in case of China. So that's the problem. On paper, this sounds awesome, but in real life, it never awesome simply because you are directly trying to cheapify something that cannot be cheap. So what are other options? Because again, people will say, hey, two-stage rockets to low Earth orbit is awesome, but two-stage cannot take you further than that. 
Now that part has some truth because again, delta V is limited. Uh, however, you have some solutions. Solutions that was invented in like, you know, 1969, Saturn V. So how did Saturn V deal with it? Again, it was two stage liquid rocket, no strap-ons. So how did they manage to go to the moon? Well, here's the deal. They had wisdom of third stage. They were like, what if instead of strapping things on the first stage, what if we put third, uh, basically strapping things on first stage booster, we added third stage. Outcome went to the moon. So fundamentally, you can literally design a, a very good liquid powered, very cost effective Falcon 9, let's just say. And you can redesign it and be like, hey, what if I put a third stage there? Here's the Falcon 9's uh, tonnage to geostationary is very little. It's not zero, but it's very little. But here's it. Put third stage, same rocket will be like, I got this. That's what happens when you have discarded majority of it and you have only a small payload and only a small booster, which is already a delta, uh, <coughs> already has delta V of uh, low Earth orbit. You going from low Earth orbit to geostationary is not that difficult for third stage. It can be done. It has been done. So that's how we solve that issue. Two stage rocket, super cost effective, super logical. And yes, cost effective because Saturn V was the same price as Space Shuttle. To be fair, Space Shuttle was overpriced. Uh, so that's what happens. And here's the that same technology can be scaled to smaller levels or kick stage. And that can be utilized for even smaller rocket like Electron rocket. That is from Rocket Labs. And what is the benefit of doing this tiny things? Well, this tiny thing gives you flexibility, meaning uh, now not only you can deliver things in low Earth orbit, you can deliver different satellites in different low Earth orbit. That can be done with different inclination, meaning you have precise control how you're delivering it, meaning one launch can handle five or six different things. That's today. If you ever wonder how the heck electron rockets are still getting contracts, kick stage. So that's one other thing. Now here's the, is there a penalty to this? Absolutely. The penalty is this requires exponentially more technology. but. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. We are in 2020s, we got this. Technology is cheap right now, we got this. So for now, and it's easily mass produced well, meaning electron rocket company can mass produce these things in the side. They're like, ah, we're making 10, 20 of them. And we are making, let's say 50 rockets. We are making 30 of these. They can do that. They can store it. They do not need special permission, hazard requirements, all that jazz, all the things that you need for ordinates. Yeah, they do not have to deal with that. They're like, unless we put fuel in, this puppy is just a hunk of metal. A very expensive hunk of metal, but a hunk of metal. So that's the whole point. Super easy to mass produce, super easy to store, scale. And here's the, what is the end product of it? Once you go through all the hassle, end benefit is that it's economical, it's payload capacity increases and orbital flexibility. Where you're dumping your payload, where, how you're getting there, all of those things improve exponentially. This is how you build a modern rocket not by putting strap on, by putting a third stage or kick stage. And both of them are on principle, they do the same thing. It's just kick stage is delta V change would be exponentially less, but it will have far more precision. And again, if you have modern technology, third stage, it, it can do the same thing. And again, let's say SpaceX, once they build the uh, Starship, they will go back to Falcon 9 and redo it with Raptor engines. And that time they can add third stage and be like, anybody's like, oh, we have geostationary capability. Third stage on a Falcon 9 redo will be like, Please, don't. So that's the new way of doing it in like 2020s way of doing it. So what can we expect in the future? Well, here's the, I always talk about the score mantra of the situation. Physics, engineering, economics. What does this mean? That simply means first thing you have to check, does physics allow it? Does physics allow you to put something in orbit? Got it, awesome. Engineering, can you physically build the damn thing? Yes, you can build it, awesome. Here's the, can you sustain it? That goes to economics. For example, can we build a craft that takes, uh, let's say, 100 people at Mach 2? Physics is like, go ahead. Engineering is like, we got this. You built Concord. Economics is like, nah, bro. Nah. Nah, bro. Like, do not even Google the price of the tickets. Nah, bro. It's like, nah, bro. What is the outcome? Nah, bro. Concord is retired, bro. The same thing. Physics, engineering, economics. Same applies with rocketry. Money matters the most in reality. Unless you are talking about armed forces, they do not have to worry about ROI, they do not have to worry about cost. Uh, everything else have to worry about it. So in those scenarios, a better system, let's say you have a better rocket, you will be beaten by something that has high cadence, even though it's an inferior technology. So let this be very clear. 
economics matters the most so if a technology that requires you a bit more capital investment but guarantees you that once you go through that capital power R&D phase and at the other end you will have like a very cheap mass production you will win as long as you can hold out for long enough which again SpaceX did that's how SpaceX is on one end everybody else on the another end and I really love the ESA's comment on their own rocket they're like yeah and the company is blackmailing them I love that part it's like yeah increase the subsidy from 100 million to 200 million I was like if we don't yeah we'll cancel the rocket and you will have nothing so that's happening I'm not even making it up anymore so that's the funny part of it so what does this mean? This simply means the we have crossed the era of strap-on, meaning India's case, India is again running the same thing of 1960s. We have awesome people who are making the payload. Just the rocket people is like, bro, 1960 have crossed. We crossed it. Like we are trying to make a human safe rocket with the solid boosters. And if you're like, that sounds expensive. Yeah, it is. Ludicrously expensive. Like SLS is, SLS is almost $4 billion per launch. It's going to be cancelled very quickly. So it's one of those things, like in the same way, Ariane 6. Ariane 6 is already expired. It's like they have no other way. That's why they are funding it anyway. It's like, and again, India is also stuck in the same paradigm. It's like, yeah, these rockets are useless, but we have to do it because again, we never evolved from 1960. Because again, right now, these looks good. Like, you know, oh, solid booster, cheap. No, it's not cheap. Oh, solid booster. Like at best, you can say our armed forces are using the same supply chains. It's just like, yeah, that's awesome. But uh, look at the price disparity. So that's the whole point. Right now we are in the era of liquid system and liquid engines have improved to such a point that thrust power to weight ratio that was the biggest selling point of solid boosters. We are almost touching it. It's like almost there. And I'm talking with liquid, methane and all that. So fundamentally, this is the era of liquid system. This is the era of a company that can understand that DA shall not have strap-ons like a Vulcan rocket, the latest and greatest. I'm like, dude, it's outdated. It has strap-ons. Like it can send geostation. It's just like the only reason you are in the market is like <laughs> SpaceX is busy with Starship. Once they sort the Starship out, once they do the refresh, you'll be like, oh, that's what we should have done. Like for example, SLS, what would have been an economical way of doing it? Just put fifth engine in there. Throw away the solid boosters. Just put five engines there. It will get enough, uh, you know, oomph to actually fly or put a better engines there or throw away hydrogen, put methane there. You're going to be sorted. But again, 1970s technology. So that's the whole point. Fundamentally, that's why all other nations' rocketry looks ancient compared to SpaceX. That's that's the one thing. It's like fundamentally your doctrine is stuck in 1960s. We crossed that. Metallurgy is good. Rocket boosters can be designed cost effectively on liquid only. You do not need to redesign the core every time. You do not need to put hundreds of explosive bolts. You do not have to worry about micro missiles going boom boom. You do not have to. But again, what if you're like, what if you are going from 1970, man? It's like, yeah, I get it. Northern Grumman is like one weapons provider and they are like trying to like have a subsidy. That subsidy does another subsidy that does your uh, space rockets. And you are wondering why it's like so expensive. So same thing. Again, look into Ariane 6. It's awesome. It's like, yeah, we built it. It's already outdated. It's already expensive. It's already causing us bankruptcy. It's funny. And same thing. Again, India is also there. And again, would India support it? Of course, they have to. Same way ESA has to. It's like, what else we gonna do? So future is very clear. And that's why all new companies that are working on the technology of 2000, like Blue Origin, no solid boosters. Um, Rocket Lab, no solid boosters. Uh, Firefly, no solid boosters. Almost all companies that are modern that are letting go of solid boosters. The only place they have solid booster is emergency escape system. And it makes sense there. But everywhere else, Da shall let go of strap on dream. Da shall not have strap on. Da shall be natural. So that's the future that we are expecting. So this was my presentation on strap-on versus uh, basically third stage or kick stage. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst a friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.